what is the highest of all the archetypal images ever created? The fool. Who? The fool. The fool? Yeah. Okay, who has another one? I like the fool, but I don't think it's the highest. Yes? The yogi? The yogi? Okay. The yogi, I don't know. You see, the yogi is trying to be it. If you're still practicing yoga, you're way down there already. You know, who, who, who are you? If you're a yogi, you're not yet Krishna. The highest archetype belongs to the common core. And in the West, it comes in the form of Santa Claus. You see, we don't worship Christ on Christmas. We worship Santa Claus. <laughs> Christ don't give you no gifts. <laughs> it's Santa who comes. And Santa gives everything, if you're good. Santa gives. That's all Santa is. His, his whole life is making presents for everyone and giving them away. Now, who gives anything to Santa Claus? You know, sometimes they put out a cup of coffee on the mantle and it's okay. But most people don't think, what, what can I do for Santa Claus, right? Some kids will send a letter to the North Pole, but usually it's, Santa, can you bring me, you know, this new game or whatever, right? It's not, I really appreciate your work, Santa Claus, and I support you. And one day I'd like to be an elf, you know, in your workshop. Well, but in fact, that's what we are. <laughs> and it is when you have accepted the archetype of Santa Claus that you have reached gr the graduation point. <laughs> I don't know why people are laughing. <laughs> why? Because what does Santa Claus give? He gives you a present. Most people only have a past. Santa gives you a present. He gives you divine presence. That's what the gift is under the tree. And what is the tree? It's the tree of life. It has to be an evergreen, right? When you have arrived at the tree of life and the star of Bethlehem, the star which is that ultimate point of infinite light that is the, the absolute image of Shiva, and, and you are within that field of delight, of joy, of, that is Christmas, the season of Christmas, and everyone comes to the tree, and there are gifts for everyone because Santa was very generous and it's all there, then everyone receives a present. And it is that. And, and a gift literally makes you present. You say, wow, this, you know, and you want to open the, the surprise package and all of that. It makes you come alive and want to be here now. You might be disappointed. Oh, that's a... <laughs> but if Santa gave you the gift, you'll say, whoa, this is better than anything I could have imagined. So it is the presence that is the real gift. And if you are willing to accept Santa's gift of eternal, evergreen presence, then you are liberated. And what that presence gives you is a pass to the North Pole and a red suit, and then you now become Santa Claus. Because that's the, the final role that anybody can play giving everything and keeping nothing for yourself. That's the complete emptying out. That's the kenosis uh, of, of Christ and of Buddha and of, of the, <clears throat> the yogi who has finally released the I thought and all the agendas and desires and fears and all of that. And then what is left is just infinite love, infinite love for all that is, because all that is, is the self. 
And the more you give, therefore, the more you get. Because the one receiving the gift is yourself. So, this is a school for Santa Clauses. <laughs> and it's when we are willing to play that role without hesitation, without feeling, I still need something from the other before I can give, you see. Then that I thought that feels needy or weak or unsafe or in some way incomplete has not allowed itself to receive the present of the real presence of Krishna, which is Christo, the Christ self, that is the true nature of Santa Claus into oneself as ultimate fullness of, of infinite capacity to give the one gift that keeps on giving, which is divine love. So I'm going over time, but I, I think there are still some notes. I don't know why I still have more notes, but OK. Here's, here's what we have to get to. If this is going to become real for us, <clears throat> the world is full of poison. And the other side of Santa Claus is represented by Shiva in Shiva's act of taking all the poison of the world and swallowing it, OK? So our job is not just to give gifts, but it's to take away poison. Everyone who is in a traumatized state or, or an ego state in which there has been any kind of wounding has poison that needs to be extracted, removed. And if you're willing to accept that poison as an act of Shiva and hold it in your throat, this is the key point. Shiva doesn't swallow it so that the poison doesn't go down to his heart, doesn't affect his love, and it doesn't go up to his brain, doesn't pass the blood-brain barrier, doesn't affect the conscious mind and the will. And in the throat chakra, this is our capacity to express, to transmit. This is the chakra of the arts. And what the arts are, are the transformation of poison into beauty, into wisdom, into all of the forms of culture in which that poison, with its sting removed, becomes medicine. Because that's all medicine is, is poison that was inappropriately dosed, right? So once the poison has been transformed into medicine, then Shiva becomes Santa Claus and gives it out. Th these are the two sides of the same archetypal image. But you have to be very strong to be able to accept the poison that other people want to spew out on you and to realize that they are doing that because they need a toxic waste dump to put that poison in that will not attack them back for doing it, that will accept without counterattack. OK, if you are willing to accept the poison that other people need to spew at you because they can't contain it anymore because it hurts too much. And if you can accept it and turn it into love and forgiveness, then you have completed a true relationship with the other that enables them also to recognize their divine nature and to let go of any inferiority or superiority complex that was defending against the poisonous feeling of lack. And we have to do that without any aha, or I told you so, or see, or aren't I great for doing that, or uh, whatever other uh, 
addenda that would be put in that would be a hook that would create some uh, false relationship of uh, entailment of an obligation. There must never be such an obligation put on the other to be thankful, to love you, to have gratitude, uh, to grow up, none of it. You cannot demand anything from the other except their freedom to be who they are as a pure letting go and release. So if we're going to play that role, then the question that you need to answer in your heart is this. Am I willing to forgive everyone who has hurt me? How many of you are willing to forgive everyone who has ever hurt you? Yeah. OK. Are you willing to forgive yourself for everyone you've ever hurt? How many are willing to do that? Forgive yourself utterly for everyone you've hurt. This is very important. Because if you don't forgive yourself, then you're holding out some specialness to the I thought, even if it's an inferior specialness. There must be a letting go and a forgiveness of yourself because the forgiveness means to give forth. This is being Santa Claus. It's giving forth of a holding back of love because, oh no, I'm still not good enough to be able to love. And it's an excuse to retain one's desire not to love all equally. Now, taking it to the next step, because we are all one, are you willing to feel the pain of all the hurt that everyone has committed against everyone else in the world? All of it. From the most, are you willing to accept all the pain? Are you willing to feel the pain of all of those who are suffering? For most, it's impossible. It's too much pain to feel. It's too much. And for that reason, God has mercifully given us the cloud of unknowing so we don't have to feel that pain in the rawest of ways that would traumatize us if we did. But if we are free of an I thought, we can feel that pain without identifying with it. And we can fulfill the act of turning the poisonous feelings of hatred, anger, fury, rejection, despising, wanting to kill, wanting to die, all of those aspects of the fate of the ego and transform it into pure love. That requires forgiving everyone for everything, everyone. Are we willing to forgive everyone? How many are willing to forgive everyone for everything? It has to be unconditional. Doesn't mean what they did is right. Doesn't mean it wasn't a crime. Doesn't mean uh, any, anything was uh, kosher that really wasn't or was dharmic when it was not part of the dharma, no. but. All of it is part of a whole that enables us to regain the infinite intelligence and capacity of love. And without that, the, the hatred, what would be the point of our love, right? There has to be hatred to be forgiven in order for the love to be able to fulfill its destiny. And then after that, what is there to hate or love if we are all one, you see? And in that freeing, that forgiveness of all, of the self, of God, we have to forgive God because many people are angry. How did God allow this to happen? 
Why didn't God intervene, you know? How did God allow Trump to get in there? How did God allow Bush? How did God allow whoever is your nemesis? How did God allow this or that? Uh, how did God allow my parents to treat me the way they did? How did God allow the world not to recognize my beauty, love, joy, goodness, strength, intelligence, whatever? Can you forgive the very laws of the universe for being as they are? Everything. And let it all go. And be completely in the present without ambition, without anger, without residue from the past, or anything that takes you out of the present into the future and be totally here as total unconditional love and total unconditional presence and in a state of absolute peace. Without needing to prove anything, get anything, change anything. Now we know that we are liberated because we are freedom itself. Because we are liberated from the one chain that bound us. And what that chain was, was the I thought that caused us to believe that we were the body in space and time who was acting. So here is the last key point for liberation. All action is slavery. Because every action has a reaction. And every action is, uh, is going to create a change, a situation of incompleteness, of imbalance, of uh, unknownness. Does the real self act? No, there is unchangeable, immutable presence. The world of action, as the Kabbalists say, Asiya, that world, and all of the worlds in between, intermediary, that have to do with thought and affect and desire and forms, all of those intermediary worlds are illusory. The only real is the absolute that is formless and that never acts at all. Presence is completely without activity. And therefore, the whole question of what do I do now? How do I act in this situation or that? <clears throat> These are false questions because the self does not act. And can you take that seriously enough to allow the body-mind to do what it needs to do, to trust that God will make it do what it's supposed to do, and it's none of your business what happens? That's up to Krishna. He's running your chariot. Even though he's invisible, he's running your chariot. Now you are invisible and let the chariot and the bow and arrow and all of it do what it's supposed to do and hit whatever targets or miss whatever targets or whatever is supposed to happen that is your destiny without worrying about when you will die as a physical being or how you will die or what will happen after death. It is that need to let go of the belief that there is any death or that the difference between life and death makes any difference to you whatsoever. When you are pure awareness, bodiless, genderless, 
ageless, uh, ethos-less, religion-less, nationality-less, family-less, enmeshment-less, and without any content of chatter filling the mind, but in the pure, blissful, luminous, fullness that is emptiness, in absolute loving presence, without any care whatsoever, then you're the fool and you are free. How many here are fools? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's enjoy our divine foolish madness and live in the freedom of what we really are. <laughs>